Hi everybody, this is Ellie. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm really excited because I will be participating in One Book July for the first time this year, and I've gotten my setup ready to start the month with, so I'm really happy to share with you guys. This video is also going to unintentionally serve as a bit of a mid-year check-in because I'm going to go through the systems that I have been using so that you kind of see where I'm at and what I'm trying to condense into this one book July. The first thing is my trusty everyday carry. This is my pocket size bullet journal in a Sojourner natural trifold this month. This is my most essential setup. It has my morning routine, any tasks, events, notes, and I've also been journaling in whatever section I have left at the end of the day. And this has been really, really great and functional for me. This Hobonichi A6 Avec is in a Hobonichi cover and this is my written journal and is also kind of a scrapbooky style. If, you know, the world were in a different state and I had been going out and getting receipts or tickets or anything, I'd include those in here. As it is, I haven't used this journal as much as I plan to this year. I want it to become a daily habit, but I've actually been doing more quick journal entries in my bullet journal. This is my Hobonichi Weeks. This is in a Sojourner Caribou folio with a special brown pocket. I wasn't sure what I would use this for. I played around with a few different versions of it at the beginning of the year, but for the past few months, I've been using it as a kind of memory keeper and space to practice my hand lettering. So I'll just write in little bits from my day. And on this right hand side, I will track daily spending. In the notes pages, I do have some financial setups and notes as well. I haven't really settled on a finance planner system yet. So that's something I'll keep working towards and I'll show you what I'm doing in my July setup. This is my Jibun Techo Light. It's in a cover from Makers South. This was a custom size. And this I use as a memory keeper and it also has some tracking pages. So every day of the month, I'll write down usually something that made me happy or something that made me grateful. And sometimes I'll just write down something that happened. I track a few things here. And in the weekly pages, I did use this as a chance to use up my stickers and again, practice some hand lettering and just have something fun to flip through. But I haven't done this consistently. The only thing that's been really consistent in here is tracking my one thing from every day. And here we have my Cultivate What Matters power sheets. So these are actually the 2019 undated six month version. So, because I only have one month left in here anyways, I thought this would be a great chance to try my tracking system in my One Book July setup. I have always wanted to have one book that functions for all of my needs or as many of them as, as it can realistically do. What I did is I have one month left and this is how each month comes. And then the tending list is all of these prep pages I just did in an old moleskin notebook that I had. And instead of doing a tending list here or like this, I just made it into a tracker. So I'm excited to show you that. So these are basically what I try to use every day. And it's a lot, but anyone watching my channel is probably also someone who loves notebooks and stationery and covers, so you get it. But basically it was bullet journal, memory keeper and finances, memory keeper, journal, and goals and tracking. And I also have these two notebooks, which I don't use regularly. This is my Gilio. It's the Giramondo Small in the yellow Epoca leather, and I use this for a social media tracker. Basically, I just use a monthly calendar to try and plan or at least give myself an idea of what I'd like to post because otherwise sometimes time just gets away from me and I haven't posted for days. And this is a B6 Slim in the Special Brown Times 3 by Sojourner and it has a Nanami Cafe Notes and I will sometimes write any 
notes on anything that I'm reading in this system here. This one I don't use super often and the content schedule, the social media planner, I'll come to weekly. Okay, so here we have my setup for One Book July. Guys, I'm super excited about this. I have really wanted, maybe you've heard me talk before, but I really want a Hobonichi cousin, but I am really trying hard not to purchase one before the 2020 lineup is released because I like the systems that I have, I love the covers that I have them in, and I really want to use them, but I'm so drawn to having more things condensed into fewer books. The longer I'm in the planner community, the more I start honing in on my style and my preferences, I think. I don't know. I'm saying that and in six months I could be singing a totally different tune. But anyways, I had totally forgotten that One Book July was even coming up until I saw Amy Graham unboxing her Filofax that she'll be using for the month and I thought, you know what, this could be the perfect time to try something new, have a little bit of change and just kind of refresh. I did a little bit of research and I have always wanted to try a Traveler's Company leather cover. So I looked on Paper Plus Cloth, which is a local Canadian stationery store, and they had the starter kit and some extras. So I ordered it there and here we are. So this is the brown in the standard size. And I really love the leather and I wasn't sure how much I would like the simplicity of just this one piece of leather, but it's beautiful. I watched a Sarah Martinez video at some point where she I specifically remember her talking about how lovely this feels inside and I totally get it now. This came with a blank notebook and I grabbed a couple others. I picked up a dot grid and a square grid. I also picked up this A5 Midori MD notebook and it's in the dot grid and I thought I could get it cut down to standard size. But when it arrived, I realized that it was just too thick to justify cutting it down and using it for this one month. So I'm going to keep it. I really like this standard size, so I imagine I will find a reason and a way to use that notebook in the future. But for now, a Traveler's Company insert is, I think, going to be perfect. And if not, the beauty of using a Traveler's Notebook system is that I can always add to it. So. I did get a couple of things from Tokyo Pen Shop as well that haven't arrived yet. I got the zipper and card folders to go in here as well as the leather pen loop. But as we all know, the postal services are a lot slower right now. So hopefully that comes at some point in July and I can put it into the system and I'll show you when I do. What I have in here is this craft folder first and I'll go through this stuff in a couple of minutes. And this here is the square grid insert. I prefer square grid. I have ever since finding Hobonichi and this is a really nice color and darkness for me. To be honest with you, what matters more to me than whether a grid is lines or dots is how dark those lines or dots are. So this is ideal and this paper is amazing. I love this paper. It's like the perfect mix to me between Tomoe River paper and I guess just regular printer paper and lined paper that I used growing up. I'm not saying it's like Tamoe River paper, but it's smooth and all the pens that I tried have worked really well in it. I haven't tried a fountain pen, but maybe I will. I just love it. The insert itself, I decorated. I just had a piece of scrapbook paper. This is kind of what's left over that I wrapped around the whole thing. I used a Gilmore Girls vinyl sticker that I got from Redbubble and have had for ages. I stamped out One Book July and found this girl in a journaling magazine and she was this beautiful collage style and said, I am enough. I'm really happy with how this turned out. 
this kind of collage style and idea was inspired by Robin at Journal Rhapsody. I even tried my hand at putting some packing tape over it and I think it turned out pretty good. On the inside, I didn't like how my leftover packing tape looked, so maybe there's a trick for that, but I was excited with all my new traveler's notebook goodies, so I just cut out and taped those down. Same within the back here, and now I'll get into my actual setup. My understanding for One Book July is that it originated with Romany from Romany's Realm, Carrie Harling, and Miss Vicky B. And the challenge was to kind of get back to basics, use one book, one pen for one month. And in that way, you would kind of realize what you really needed to work in your system. And then you could add things in kind of as the month went along. I think for me, I'm actually pretty comfortable in my system. The pocket size bullet journal works really, really well for me. It's functional. It lets me do kind of the amount of decorating I like and personalization, but it can also be super, super basic. So I didn't really have too many challenges when thinking about how to transfer that into this system. It's also funny because when I watched some of the videos on One Book July, it does talk about kind of condensing and going smaller. But for me, because I was already in a tiny pocket size, I did the opposite and went bigger. And one of the ways that I chose this size, aside from really wanting to try the original Traveler's Company, is that I like the rectangular size when it comes to planning. I love A6 and B6 when it comes to journaling, but when it comes to planning, I write pretty small. So I find that I like a lot of my bullet points will just be to maybe here and I'll have a lot of space already in my pocket size. So getting like an A6 or a B6 or even an A5 would be, I think, a lot of wasted space. I wanted to add that the hosts of One Book July, so that's Romani from Romani's Realm, Carrie Harling, Miss Vicky B, and Mimi from Everyday Awesome TV. They come up with a specific challenge each year, and this year's challenge is pick and mix, which I believe means that they're pulling aspects from challenges that they've done in the past, and they're inviting anyone who's participating to do the same. For me personally, just getting started in this one book setup is going to be enough of a challenge, but Carrie Harling will be doing a read-along of The One Thing, and I took a look at that book, and that's something that really interests me, so I will be picking it up. I'm not sure whether or not I'll be able to read along with her in real time because I'm still trying to finish Daring Greatly this month, but I would like to, so I'm definitely going to get the book at the very least and put it on my reading list and if all goes well hopefully I'll be able to read along with her and the community and participate in some discussions. I also totally forgot to mention my morning pages when I was showing you all of my setups so I am still doing that in this B6 setup. This is from Simply Gilded and I just have a notebook that I've had for ages in here. I'm going to continue doing this in this notebook because I do not intend to keep these morning pages. They are a brain dump and they will be either recycled or burned maybe if we can have any sort of campfires this summer. So we'll see, but I did want to just hop on and say, I do have this set up. I just totally forgot about it and I'm going to keep writing my morning pages separate from One Book July. I have my quote that's been in every bullet journal, May Your Choices Reflect Your Hopes, Not Your Fears, by Nelson Mandela. This is a piece of ephemera that I got from Marinay at Protect Your Peace, and I just wrote July and my quote for the month here. This month's quote reads, Being connected to everything has disconnected us from ourselves and the preciousness of this present moment. And that's by L. M. Browning, and it's from a collection called Vagabonds and Sundries. I also didn't plan for an index, but I realized that I might end up kind of writing lists or notes within my daily pages in here because I will have extra space or so I'm anticipating. 
So I printed, I typed up and printed this index on some Chimoe River paper and just put it right there on the front page. I have some washi tapes and here we go. Okay, I guess one of the first things I will say is I didn't realize that it was one book, one pen until I was mostly done my setup. I had been playing around with the idea of using different pens. I already know that my favorite pen is the Uni Jetstream in the 0 0.5. I have multiple versions of this here from Tokyo Pen Shop. It's the slim body with the red, blue, and black ink, and this is what I will be using. I also used some of my Le Pen technical drawing pens for setting some pages up. This is my favorite fine liner. I use the 0 0.1, 0 0.005, and 0 0.003. And I also used this one, the Uniball Signo. It's the retractable in the 0 0.38, and I love this pen too. While editing this video, I realized that although I love my Uni Jetstream, and this I think will always be at the very top of my list for favorites, I am really, really being drawn towards this Uniball Signo in the 0.38. This is a gel pen and it lays down a nice thin black line. That's what I've used here. And I've kind of shied away from using it on the regular because I'm usually using Tomoe River paper and it does need dry time. And it also tends to smear with any of the highlighters or markers I've tried on top of it. But I want to give this a fair chance and a go this month. I love the feel of it in my hand. I just love the clicking. I love everything about it. So I am going to give this one a try, which means I will be only in black ink as well. I won't have the red and blue that I kind of imagined I would, but that's okay. This is another way to challenge myself. I've always wanted to give this a good try. Sarah Martinez is the one who introduced me to these pens and I love them. So the Uniball Signo is what I will be using as my one pen for One Book July. And just as a caveat, I mean, it's a challenge, but it's obviously flexible and you can adapt it to your needs and your tastes. And I might be doing a fountain pen challenge with my Frontera, and if that's the case, it will be in here. And I'll obviously be adding another pen to the mix. So you do whatever works for you, but for me, the idea of starting off with one pen is really appealing, especially when it's a pen I've been really wanting to try on a more long-term consistent basis. Um, I'm going to use this Tombow to help with any grids or any highlighting that needs to be done. This is in the N89 and to be honest, I thought it would be really, really light, but it's such a lovely, mild light gray that goes really really well with the lines which you'll see as I keep going. The other thing that I'm trying to do to challenge myself is to limit the washi tapes that I use. So these will be my primary washi tapes. I say primary because I might put in some swatches here and there if I get any happy mail or something like that but this is a watercolor washi tape from Paper Plus Cloth. I don't recall the artist's name, but I will put it on the screen. And these four washi tapes here are all from Note and Wish. And these all go so beautifully together. I am really happy to be playing around with them. You'll see them in my setup so far, and I think they'll work really well throughout the rest of the month. Here I have my July tasks and my focus for the month. So this month I want to unplug and reconnect with myself, with my loved ones, and with the world around me. I've realized that being at home has been great in a lot of ways, but it's also given me more time with my phone and the internet. And while there's a great amount of pleasure and learning and like really interesting things on there, I found myself on it more mindlessly than I'd like to be. So this is a reminder to intentionally unplug. And this is something I'm looking forward to in July and hopefully onward. 
this is the free monthly printable from the SM Plans Facebook group. I printed this again on Timoe River paper. I have my July Calendex here, written out the dates, the days of the week, and I've just used that Tombow to mark off between Sunday and Monday, so the start of every week. Originally, I was going to do one calendar that would keep my memories like I was doing in my Jibun Techo, but then I realized that I also wanted a space where I could plan my content for the month and write down any upcoming appointments or anything like that. So this calendar layout is something that was inspired by Serica Studios on Instagram. And I'm super happy with how it turned out. It's very minimal and I was able to use just washi tape and stickers to add a little bit of decoration. I used washi tape and washi stickers exclusively in here because since the size was so new to me, and I wanted the freedom to play around without having to commit. I also wasn't sure where I wanted to write my 2020 goals because part of my morning routine is reading them over every morning but I figured I could put them right here on the calendar page so that when I was looking at that day, I'd have the chance to read them or the opposite maybe. When I'm reading these, I'll have an overview of this month. I also included my word of the year and all of my titles I stamped with the alphabet stamp from Amazon. I'll link that below as well. So this is July calendar and this calendar here is the exact same layout and it will be my July memories. So these stickers here are from Note and Wish as well. And I wrote a quote for this memory page that says, it is not joy that makes us grateful, it is gratitude that makes us joyful. Brother David Steindl Rast. I love that. I look at my memory keeping pages as gratitude pages because it's just me finding something good in every day or just finding a moment in every day that maybe brought me awareness or reflection. And I love keeping track of those. I believe I'm going to do it only with pen and maybe my highlighter in here. Usually I'll use stickers, but I'm gonna try and keep it a little more basic this month. After that, we come to my trackers page. So this was interesting because I combined my power sheets and also the trackers that were at the bottom of my Jibun Techo. I separated it into daily, weekly, and monthly, which is how it is in the power sheets. I listed them and then wrote the dates for the dailies, the weeks for the weekly, and then just a bar that I will color in as I work on each of these goals. So some of them asleep by 12.15. I'm really trying to adjust my sleeping pattern. For June, my goal was asleep by 12.30 and I did it for a fair amount of days. I thought I might be able to go down to midnight for July, but that was not realistic, I realized. So 12.15, I'm fine with slow and steady progress. Things like unplug, track spending, I put water plants. That won't be daily, but that'll be something I will do more often than weekly and want to see when that happens. I put a dot above every Monday and that's something that I've seen Lindsay from Lindsay Scribbles do. She is like the queen of trackers. So I watched a couple of her videos for inspiration on how to do this spread as well. Weekly, I, you know, yoga, quality time with Paul. Another thing that comes I think from being home is that Again, I guess it all comes down to intentionality. Like we spend a lot of time together, but it might be, you know, we're physically together, but doing other things. So it's nice when we actually carve out time to do something together, whether it's play a game or watch a movie or just sit and talk. So I like to make sure that that's something that um, I focus on and give priority to. Here, I wanna brainstorm my evening routine. My morning routine's going pretty well, so I feel comfortable starting to work on an evening one. I wanna watch some budget videos as I figure out how I wanna do my finance setup and finish Daring Greatly by Brené Brown, which I'm a good chunk of the way through and I'm loving. This little guy is from a washi tape. 
It's by the same artist at Paper Plus Cloth. Again, I will link her. But it's just so stinking cute. So I'll probably use this guy as well, this washi tape, and you might see me cut out a few of these to stick on the pages. And here I put a future log page. I don't think I'll need this, but I really wanted to have a space where if there's anything upcoming, I could just jot it here because I'm not going to be using my little future log insert. I thought about it. I didn't think it would be cheating, but I just don't need to. I'm going to track things like my cycle and my curly girl hair stuff in this calendar. So this should be enough for anything that's happening after July. And this will lead to my dailies. I did include my finance tracker in here, but after a lot of debating, I left it at the back, mostly because I don't think I'll be in it every single day. And also if I do any flip throughs, it'll be towards the back and I can keep the sensitive information private. But I didn't fill anything in yet because I wanted to give you a look at what I will be doing. So this is kind of modified from some of the Budget Moms videos, some of Jen Plan's videos, and just what's realistic for me right now. Includes some fixed expenses, some variable expenses, my sinking funds categories, and then an expense tracker. I had two spreads for this, so I still have two pages left at the back, and I think this should work out really well. But we'll, we'll see. I haven't done it like this before, so we'll live and learn. But I think this will be really helpful. The way I was tracking expenses before was just daily, but this one has the date, the account, the category, and whether it's a withdrawal or a deposit. We'll see. I'm hopeful. And in the back here, I was just playing around with some of my different Tombos, brush lettering markers, and pens on this back page here I just have my grid cheat sheet so that just helps when I'm doing any spacing for any different spreads. At the top I have four tabs. I have one tab on my tasks and my calendex, one tab on my trackers, this will be for my dailies, and this is for my future log. One of the other things that I will be trying this month is to use tabs more often. I've seen so many people do it and it looks so great and seems so functional that I will be playing around with that this month. I guess I'm kind of using One Book July to try an all-in-one system, which is something I have always wanted to try, and also to try a few things that Maybe I was just a little nervous to try before, things like tabs, keeping my trackers in here, and so forth. In the front here, I just have some of the ephemera I'll probably be using this month. So I have these washi flake stickers, and I got these from Fairy Milk Bar. These are planner related, and I love them. I've used some already, and they're great. I have these from Soitelier and I got those from Paper Plus Cloth and some stickers from Note and Wish, most of which are washi stickers. Not all of them, a couple of the sheets aren't, but I didn't realize when I ordered them and that was an even bigger bonus. On the front of this, I put just some more washi tape and this from the Happy Planner Homebody sticker kit which says be present in all things and I thought that went perfectly with my quote and focus for the month. I'm looking forward to getting kind of the last few pieces to finish decorating this setup but I love this. I love I was going to say I love the simplicity. In some ways it feels more simple than anything I've done before and in other ways it also feels a little more elaborate than what I've done before. I think that just comes from thinking about thinking about it so much when I was setting it up because this is pretty minimal and functional even though I really like the way it looks. So I'm excited. I'm really excited to give this a try and to put all of those other notebooks away. I'm really happy with this setup going into July. 
I still have to do my July tasks, but I'm going to wait right until the end of June before I see what needs to be migrated over. I also haven't talked about my dailies and what those might look like and what I aim to include. I will be doing more videos on this setup as I figure out what works, what doesn't, and just have fun playing around. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask down below. And if you'll be participating in One Book July, I'd love to hear what you're using, if it's your first time, if you're going to partake in any of the challenges. So please feel free to share. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.